Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Movie Talk. My name is Matthew Tangeman, and today we are joined by Joshua Ford. You can see him in the recent movie Cosmos, which was written, directed, and produced by Elian Zander Weaver, and uh, is now currently out on Blu-ray and digital. Josh, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Matt. Thank you. So, uh, just to kind of get things uh, kicked off and started off here, um, when were you first approached with the idea of Cosmos, or uh, first approached with the script? That's a that's a good question. Um, I I was first contacted by Elliot and Xander on the, the exact date was the eleventh of November two thousand and fourteen. Um, so quite some time ago now. They they sent me a message over Twitter, um, introduced themselves, and asked if I'd be interested in auditioning for one of the roles in Cosmos, which I was I eventually got. <laughs> um. Now, when you first originally read the script, uh, script to screen, is there uh, anything that was cut out that uh, you think probably should have been put into the film, or is it pretty much the full script that we see on the screen? Um, I mean, there are there are some cuts. There are definitely a few cuts in, in with, with certain lines um, here and there, but I don't think there's that much. I, I didn't watch the movie and go, oh, that was a big segment cut out there. Uh, it was just a line here or there, just to sort of like, I suppose, um, just to sort of like clean up uh, the character dynamic, probably. Yeah, exactly. Just make it a bit concise. And as actors, the three of us, we were allowed to change a few words. Like uh, there were a few colloquialisms that didn't, you know, from someone from London, I wouldn't ever say, but maybe a, a brown, someone in Birmingham would. So Elliot and Xander allowed me to change a few words t to make it seem a bit more natural coming from me. Uh, I think probably one of my favorite lines in the movie actually comes pretty early on when, uh, you know, Harry gets out the telescope and he's, uh, has it named after his wife and then Roy, you know, it's like, you know, you're saying it's, you know, it's like, you know, it's, it's slender, it's makes life worth living and he said it's also stiff and emotionless and weighs a ton. I'm sure she'll appreciate the sentiment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a laugh at that. It's it's that beautiful example of British dry humor that I love so much. Oh, absolutely, and it's it's scattered all the way through as well. And I mean, yeah. what's really lovely is, I suppose, when you watch the movie, you don't really see that that was happening uh, off film as well. We're all having such a laugh and trying to make each other giggle, and 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 I think that really comes across in the film. It's like, I can imagine it was probably a very light set to work on, and it was probably. Uh, one of those things where it was just, you know, you guys would probably come together like a family, like most of these smaller films do. I mean, uh, like was said in the documentary, you guys, you know, not only were you the actors in the film, but you were also part of the crewing and uh, helping with the lighting, clap reports, etc. Yeah, that's right. Um, I mean, yeah, we we couldn't be closer if you tried, really. the the Our little Cosmos team, we, we really adore each other and we love spending time with each other and we got so close um, but in terms of working on the set together yeah we did all band together and and do different jobs and help out as much as we can because if we didn't there'd be the three of us sat there watching Elliot and Xander and, and Leslie do everything and that just we just can do that <laughs> we can just sit there and watch just just all three of you are just sitting off to the side with a cup of tea just like Roy in the movie just like yeah yeah you guys are doing fine just if anyone needs me, I'll be in my trailer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there a uh, particular onset story that uh, really comes to mind that, uh, you know, really sort of stands out in your mind as a really cool day on set? There's one, there's one that uh, really stands out for me, um, a story where we kind of just sat back and realized just how important it was we were doing for ourselves. It was only me, Elliot and Xander filming this, this night, and Tom and Arjun weren't called. We were in the middle of the woods and we were in the middle of nowhere, there's no electricity and for some reason none of the equipment was working, the cameras weren't working properly, the lights weren't working properly and it was getting really frustrating and in the end we just had to call it, we couldn't get what we wanted to get so we got, all a, bit, we got a bit grumpy and, like, oh, you know. and we walked out of these woods and we were loading the van back up and we looked up and because we were in the middle of nowhere the sky was sp like just spotless and you could see everything um with such that you could see it was like i always describe it as it was like a movie when they look at the stars you could see every single star you could see constellation mist you could see a satellite going by with the wings you could see shooting stars 
And we all kind of just looked up and it was almost as if there was a reason we couldn't capture the footage we wanted to capture because that experience was as important as the, as the footage we were supposed to capture. And the next day when we went and filmed, it just put it all, you know, I understood Harry Knight much more um, and I understood the movie. And that for me was a move that, that for me was an experience where I kind of just go, yeah, that was really special. And to share that with Elliot and Xander and Leslie was just mad. We, there was another time and it was our final night of shooting. We were filming outside. It was our, it was our final couple of shots and we were all there together, the whole team. And um, it was the Perseid Meteor Shower. And we were actually there filming with the Perseid Meteor Shower going over above our heads. And obviously, uh, Harry has a line in the movie where he talks about how the Perseid Meteor Shower is the thing that got him into the uh, astronomy in the first place. And to film the last scene, the last couple of shots, uh, with that happening right above us, and we could see it was... You couldn't write it, it was spectacular. It was spectacular. Going away from Cosmos a bit, uh, for yourself as an actor, is there any uh, particular um, performances over the years that have, uh, you know, sort of inspired you to uh, not only get into the profession, but also, uh, you know, just do what you do now, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think as an actor, I, I constantly look for, um, I constantly look for inspiration. I, I, even now, everywhere I look, I want to be inspired. Um, well, I grew up with, with uh, theatre um, predominantly, and I trained in theatre predominantly. Um, so I look at sort of these uh, classic actors, you know, there's um, your John Gilgood, your Laurence Olivier's, Kenneth Branagh's, these sort of actors that make me think, wow, what power they have on stage. Um, yeah. Mark Rylance is somebody that I will, there's something about Mark Rylance, you watch him in anything and suddenly you're a better actor um, just by watching him. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne, all these all these actors with with power and gravitas, I really enjoy. More recently, it's been I, I thoroughly enjoy watching Cumberbatch, um, uh, Martin Freeman, separately and together. Uh, Simon Pegg, these 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 British actors that almost came from nowhere. Uh, Simon Pegg, for example, um, you know I remember watching him in Spaced, and he wrote that, and then he went on, and he's done bigger and better stuff, and it's. It's kind of cool just to see these actors start from nowhere and go somewhere, and then you kind of, that's inspiring. That's inspiring for me. Yeah. Uh, for you, do you have a particular favorite scene from the actual film itself? Um, I have a few. I uh, any any scene where it's the three of us in the car together is was just pure delight to film. Um, when there's three of us together, we just had such fun, and I think the Uncle Rat scene. Um, without giving too much away for anyone who's not seen it, I think you know what I mean, don't you? The uh, yeah, I, I do. I yeah, do. Um, that that little that little bit in the movie after it breaks a bit of tension, uh, it breaks a bit of drama. It, it's a nice, warm little moment, and and I remember moment for moment of filming that, and the three of us had well, not just the three of us, everyone outside the car as well. We were having such fun. That was uh, really that's my favourite scene, definitely. Yeah. Um, and any scene, any scene with Tom England in is also one of my favorite scenes. He's delightful. <laughs> Back into acting, was there a particular thing in the performance in the sense of preparation that you uh, did for it? Say, for example, did you watch anything or take inspiration from a specific performance uh, for the character of Harry, or did? Elliot and Xander kind of lay it all out for you. It's like, okay, this is, you know, the whole backstory for this guy. Here's how to do it. <laughs> uh, no, we were very, we were very open to play with, with the backstory of the characters and, and um, approach each character uh, in our own way. Um, when I started, when I, when I joined the team with Cosmos, I, I believe I was the final one cast, actually. When I joined the team, I, I just, I was just about to graduate from drama school, so I had all these fresh methods and ideas, whatever. Um, uh, so I was applying everything that I learned over three years at drama school to uh, to the script to begin with. And then I realized about a third of the way into filming that all I really needed to do was make a decision <laughs> and not have all this theory work behind it. Um, so I started watching a lot of a lot of movies that I knew inspired 
the movie um, that inspired Cosmos. So I watched Jaws, I watched DT, e. I watched a lot of the Spielberg um, stuff that uh, I know um, Alexander appreciate. And then in terms of my own, in terms of Harry Knight, I wanted to create a character which was a mixture of Martin Freeman and Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> which coming together, which is a bit weird, but I love I loved I love how Jeff Goldblum explains things in movies. It's very syncopated, it's very uh almost like jazz in the way that he talks. And then I love Martin Freeman's um ordinary man in extraordinary situation, an ordinary man in an extraordinary circumstance, uh, which I thought applied to Harry Knight in this, in the, the, the narrative surrounding him. So I wanted to mix those two together and then also add a massive splash of myself as well, um, which I, you know, which I think I did. I mean, the character is me. And then I created a whole backstory uh, that no one watching their movie will know about, but um, we have a laugh about it. The whole Cosmos team know my backstory, so it's... I feel like I, feel like I should ask about it, but then it would kind of ruin it. <laughs> uh, there's not a huge... The only, we have a little bit of a joke that um, I always said, even now, um, it's the character's name. I, I, call it, uh, I call him Dr. Harry J. Knight. And when anyone asks me what the J stands for, um, I would say it's Judith, because... Harry's mum and dad always wanted a girl, so when he was born, they called him Harry Judith Knight. And I was ho I was hoping that would make it into the credits, but it didn't. But that's a that's just a little thing that we thought. <laughs> yeah, I remember when we spoke about costume and we sent costume ideas to to the weavers. Um, I was heavily leaning to. I just watched Independence Day Resurgence. I think the day before, which is a movie I didn't particularly enjoy. Yeah, no, it's 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 pretty damn bad. <laughs> yeah, um, but I was into a costume quite heavily inspired, Jeff Goldblum inspired from that movie. It didn't make it in, uh, uh, you know, but I got the glasses in. I wanted glasses, uh, and yeah. we had the glasses in there as well. But um, yeah, it was, there was an element of that, but then also a massive amount of just me as well, just being Joshua Ford, I suppose. Uh, it's like a Twitch with the glasses and everything. I can almost call you Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like, uh, is there any uh, particular favorite stories that you have of uh, either of your uh, co-actors, uh, Arjun or Tom? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Whether it be on or offset. <laughs> I, I think I've got one for each, actually. Just, just talk complete shit about them. Just yeah, those, those <laughs> bastards. <laughs> yeah, I can't stand those guys. No, I'm joking. They're, they're delightful. <laughs> Both of them. Um, with Arjun, Arjun, uh, we we all used to sleep when we <laughs> when we weren't being filmed, when we weren't on camera, or sometimes even if we were on camera. Um, yeah. We would sleep because it was such long days. We're in dark rooms or, or or outside in the cold. So there are times in the movie that you'll watch a scene with Arjun and, and Tom, and they'll be the back of my head at the front of the car, but I'll be fast asleep um, in real life. Anyway, we'd always thought that Arjun was asleep, and most of the time, Arjun would be creeping up, ready to make someone jump. So you were always on edge when you were filming with Arjun, because you know that he's going to make you jump at some point or the other. He's going to make you jump. Um, yeah, I think I think we got a taste of that in the uh, behind the scenes thing, where it's like he's about to do, Tom's about to do the clapperboard, and all of a sudden he just jumps up. <laughs> every time, you're always on edge. Um, and... Uh, uh, another story with Tom, I thought, <laughs> when we were filming inside um, the car, we were in this amazing garage, essentially, that, um, that we were filming in. And above this garage was a yoga studio. Uh, and we used to go up there with our breaks, have a cup of tea, a cup of coffee. Um, but it was quite cold because it was the middle of winter. It was snowing and everything. And we didn't want to turn the heating on because obviously we weren't paying for it. And we didn't want to, you know, even though the people that owned it said, oh, definitely, you know, if you get cold... But we thought we'd be generous and just wrap up warm. Um, but me and Tom got really, really cold. So we used to go up there before, like about five minutes before the break. And I'd used to switch the heating on. And then it would warm up and we'd get up there. And then we'd have to distract everyone else so they didn't see the heating that was on. And then either me or Tom would go up behind them and just turn it off. And we'd go, oh, it's warm in here. I don't know how that happened. And no one, no one suspected us for the whole time we were filming there. And we told them, Complete, complete, and total espionage. <laughs> yeah, that was us. <laughs> it's like, 
It's like it just pops up a thing from like Skyrim. It's like sneak level one hundred. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've worked as a team to get that heating going. Since this is also uh, a show where I've called it, you know, movie talk, uh, let's talk, you know, different movies that say have either inspired us or at the same time uh, say films that we've seen recently. Maybe even give a small review of them. Uh, you know, just just to kind of get you know stuff out there. Fill up the content, damn it. Fill up the content. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, so let's start with, you know, say films that have inspired us to, you know, do what we do. You know, uh, for me, it's, you know, directing, writing. It's like, obviously for you, it'd be acting. Uh, and uh, we'll start off with you. <laughs> All right. My uh, a movie that I uh, inspires me heavily anytime I watch it, the first time I watched it even now. Um, and I think it's it's a, an incredible movie, um, Silver Lining Playbook. Um, oh yeah, yeah, with Bradley Cooper and uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Um, the first time I watched that, I was in the greatest place mentally, wherever I was, and um, I, I just I thought the representation of uh, bipolar and depression in that movie is really um, sensitive and performed with tact, and I think the actors do a phenomenal job in that film. Um, it's my one of my favorite films, and I watch it, and it's like, yeah, I, I want to act in something like this. I want to, I want to perform with something. Well, just to perform with Bob De Niro would be great, but perform with this level of integrity. Um, For me, as far as you know, movies that say inspire me, it's uh, I think, like I said in the uh, interview from Alien Xander, mo most of the works that inspire me are the works of like Spielberg. Uh, you know, just the way that he, you know, composes so many of his shots, and many of the shots that he does in his films are actually in pretty much one take. Uh, if it's like you look at many of the scenes, you know, they go on for two, three minutes and everything, and you you don't even realize, you know, like you're part way through the scene, and it's like it's going entirely by in one cut. Yeah, I, I love it. it um, and the, the trick that Spielberg does as well um, is he almost makes the scenes theatrical because they're so long, they're not cut every two seconds. The actors, I think, have the space to be a bit more theatrical with it um, and play it as a small theatrical scene on, on camera. Um, and obviously that was happening a lot in Cosmos. There were some really long, long shots and obviously very heavily Spielberg inspired. Um, but it, yeah. it it gave me a massive inspiration for Spielberg as well. I'd always enjoyed Spielberg, but I never really. I'm I wasn't I'm not really a filmmaker, so I never really watched it. And went oh, this is how they do that. It's only after really all the process of Cosmos made me really appreciate Spielberg. Um, and obviously, hanging around Elliot and Xander, their love of Spielberg has has um, rubbed off on me, so to speak. Um, and now I'm a big fan of him as well for movies that may have come out recently have you seen anything and might as well give a review on it <laughs> yeah what's the most recent i've been so busy recently the most recent film that i've i've seen was last time i went to the uh, cinema it was with my partner so it must have been the joker to be honest that's the last time i've really sat down and, and seen anything yeah with uh walking jo phoenix it's like you give a phenomenal performance in that movie and well deserved his Oscar for Best Actor. I thought about it the other day. Joaquin Phoenix, he hasn't, he hasn't done a bad movie. I mean, he's, he's done a bad movie. He's never done a bad performance. Like, ever. Yeah. Um, and like, actors go up and down or whatever. And I'm sure it's all, it is all opinion. But I am so sure that he hasn't ever done a, like, a bad performance. He's been in dodgy movies here and there. But his performance has always, yeah. always been consistently phenomenal. Um, yeah. and he's very subtle, um, he's not, uh, even the Joker, uh, as flamboyant and, um, uh, and colourful as the character may be, the performance was still subtle, and I, I think that's the magic of what he does, he makes, he makes these really surreal characters very, um, human, uh, yeah. and I, I thought his performance in Joker was extraordinary i thought physically as well not just the physical transformation he did but the way he moved physically like the way he physically performed was um ridiculously outstanding yeah i i think the yeah it's a 
It's like it's definitely one of his most outstanding performances that I've ever seen Joaquin do. Uh, probably some of my other two favorite performances from him are like Walk the Line, uh, where he played Johnny Cash, and then also it was uh, it was the movie Gladiator. It, it's one of those things where you look at that performance and it's like, how did he not win Best Actor then? <laughs> or best supporting actor in that sense. He's also great in um her? Yeah, yeah, the uh Spike uh Spike Jones uh film, yeah. I don't think it's a phenomenal movie. It's pretty good. I quite liked it. But um I thought his performance in it is is exemplary. Um he's an actor that, you know, I think any young actor any actor looks looks up to him and goes, Oh, one day that'd be lovely to be performing the roles to the level that you're performing the match, you know. I mean so all we're trying to do at the moment as actors is just keep working. <laughs> yeah, it's a, like, you know, it's obviously that huge struggle, especially if you look at, you know, so many people in L.A., they're still, you know, struggling to, like, you know, get their big gig and everything like that. But, you know, it's like, it's, it's work, you know, and, you know, you got to really work hard at it to really achieve the dream, the dream that you want. Yeah, you really, you absolutely do. I mean... Here, I probably work, as an actor, I probably work maybe 8 to 12, no, probably about 12 to 18 weeks of the year, probably as an actor, and the rest is just trying to audition and get work and, and, and crack on. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm very lucky with Cosmos, that I think is, because that's still happening, there's still stuff going on with that, that um, is quite exciting. And I'm still spreading the word about it. Uh, being being the person I am, I'm still spreading the word, just being like, hey, watch this. <laughs> yeah, and so many people, and we're so lucky to have a loyal fan base, really. Uh, people that have been there with Elliot and Xander from the beginning and then and, and have been supportive of the film and, and, and almost take it upon themselves to be a real-life, almost like a real-life astronaut, in a sense, of joining the team and, sh and spreading the word. So that's still going on, and there are, I know that Elliot and Xander are doing stuff with that that um, uh, is quite exciting. So... I'm hoping that opens more doors and, and, and things like that. But at the moment, I'm just happy plodding along and getting as much work as I can. And hope, hopefully, Cosmos gets seen by lots of people. We still get messages from people about it saying, you know, how much they love the film, whether they love my performance or Arjun's or Tom's or, or the camera work, whatever. It's really cool, man. Just sitting there, just like getting a message from some random bloke in the middle of the world, on the, middle, on the other side of the world. It's just cool. Like, it's wicked. Yeah. All right. Well, I think I'll go ahead and end off the interview there. Uh, it's like that. It's like it has been phenomenal talking with you, Josh, uh, about the film and uh, the art of acting. And uh, hopefully, you know, it's like we can get uh, Arjun and Tom on to the next interview, and hopefully that can uh, really. It's like I imagine just the entire time they'll just talk shit about you. <laughs> Probably, yeah. We don't get on. We don't get on at all. <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure, Matt. Thank you so much. Um, definitely keep in touch. Can't wait to see what you do. And, and yeah, definitely keep in touch. And um, yeah, enjoy your interviews with Arjun and Tom. They are two of the best blokes in the world. Yeah. And now time to do a bit of plugging. And everyone, be sure to get cosmos it is on it is available on blu-ray and digital you can get uh, both of the links that are down in the description below for the physical copy and the digital copy thank you all for joining us on movie talk this has been matt and josh see you all next time <laughs>